does it really affect Pakistan economically? Whether it's a Republican or a Democrat sitting in the White House? Historic data would suggest otherwise. If you look at exports, if you look at imports, if you look at FDI, be it Republic, be it Democrat, what's happening in Pakistan, how we manage our economy, how we manage our own house as we face internal and external shocks, that is what determines the performance of Pakistan's economy, not who's sitting in the White House. Having said that, there are four ways that America can impact Pakistan's economy directly or indirectly. Directly, one of the most important ways US is important for Pakistan is an export destination. Almost $2 out of every $10 exported is exported to the US, primarily in textiles and apparel. In terms of investment, FDI, the US accounted for only about 4% of total FDI in 2023. So investment dollars coming in from the US are pretty insignificant. Of course, Pakistan relies heavily on global institutions like the World Bank and the IMF, where the US influence plays a huge role. So changes in American politics and policies could directly impact Pakistan's economy. Other than that, there are four points of note. Firstly, it is Trump's stance on tariffs. Trump has announced not only 60% tariffs on Chinese imports, 60% and more, he has also said that he may put 10% tariffs on imports of other countries. This could spell disaster for our textile sector, which is heavily dependent on the US for exports. Especially right now with what is happening in Bangladesh, the interest rate easing, the LCs opening up, the textile sector has a window of opportunity for a surge in exports. And if 10% tariffs are imposed on Pakistan's exports to the US, that would erase that surge. That would erase our, our exports. Especially because Pakistan does not have a trade deal with the US. It has no preferential access to the US market like it does to the EU market under GSP+. However, the Dominican Republic and the Central American countries do have a trade agreement. It is called the US Dominican Republic Central America Free Trade Agreement and it is extended among other countries to Honduras, El Salvador and Guatemala. These are Pakistan's direct competitors. Under this trade agreement, those countries are part of US supply chains. So if Pakistan's imports into the US have a 10% tariff slapped on them, Pakistan could be a severe disadvantage compared to them. In this case, a Trump presidency could have a direct negative impact on the economy. On the contrary, Harris is a more tempered approach on tariffs. It is unlikely to happen that high tariffs are imposed on Pakistan's exports to the US if a Democrat is sitting in the White House. Coming to the second point, both Harris and Trump have talked about increasing American purchasing power. They have both proposed higher tax credits for children, which means it would be cheaper to have babies. An American import about more than a billion dollars worth of baby apparel every year, baby apparel and accessories. Plus, Harris has also promised tax relief to middle-income families. Trump has gone in a slightly different direction. Trump has proposed a 10% cap on interest on credit cards, which is less than the current interest rate on credit cards. Now, America is a heavily credit card dependent economy. Eight out of 10 Americans adults carry credit cards. These measures would boost the purchasing power of American middle-income group, which is Pakistan's target market for exports. Now, Third point. One main way Trump's and Harris's economic policies differ drastically is that Trump wants to lower the corporate tax rate for companies manufacturing in the US and Harris wants to tax big businesses. If Trump gives Make in America incentives, it could diminish demand for Pakistan's imports because American companies might find it cheaper to just manufacture there. Fourth and last point. And for this, we should take a gander back into the past when Trump was in power the first time around. So it's 2018 and Trump has started the trade war with China, imposing tariffs. China retaliated by imposing tariffs on American soybean imports. China is among the top consumers of soybean and US was one of its main sources. However, after the tariffs, China started importing from other countries. So China had a shortage and US had a glut of soya bean. Brazil stepped in, it's one of the biggest manufacturer uh, producers of soya beans. It started selling its soya bean to China. So what Brazil did, it sold its own soya bean to China and but because the demand from China was so huge, it couldn't use all of its uh, soya bean produced for China alone. It imported soya bean from the US for domestic use. Other countries became resellers. I think India was one of them. Import, they would import from the US and export to China. Now, local producers in the industry also wanted to try this out, but because of bureaucratic huddles, we did not have a GMO, genetically mutated organism license and because it involved the coordination of three different ministries and bodies, it was not granted to us. And we missed this opportunity. Eventually, China and US uh, reached a deal and now China continues to import from the US, though it has 
diversified is soya bean import and Pakistan is not one of its suppliers. Another example is oil tariffs on Chinese auto vehicles. Because of this, China has invested billions of dollars in Mexico as a backdoor to the US. And this has happened for other countries too. Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos. China has relocated manufacturing to many other countries to continue its access to the mega US market. If Trump imposes tariffs, China will continue to look for other countries to manufacture from and export from. And here, Pakistan could really benefit from this. But it again comes down to how we manage our own economy. Security, policy, continuity, politics, operational special economic zones are essential for that. Basically, if we want US elections to create opportunities for Pakistan, it is entirely up to us and the government of Pakistan to bring a conducive economic environment to increase ease of doing business for the investment to flow in.